I know you've uh, expressed support for universal basic income in the past in your interviews, but um, there's this guy, Andrew Yang, that wants to give everybody a thousand bucks a month with a, a VAT tax. And I think to win the Democratic primary, you got to do that. You got to give everybody nah, a thousand bucks. I got no? a better idea. Nope. Don't we'll do it. Nope. You gotta... Sorry you came all the way from Alabama. <laughs> all right, here's the better idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the better idea, I think, is that in a nation, in which there is so much work to be done. Just think about it. You got an infrastructure which is crumbling. We can put millions of people to work doing that. Transforming our energy system in terms of weatherizing homes all over this country, building a more efficient energy uh, transportation system, putting more money into wind and solar and other sustainable technologies. We can create millions of jobs doing that. But in your plan, the federal government gets nothing in return. So why is yours better? Um, so I understand the spirit of a federal jobs guarantee. Um, I think in practice it would be somewhere between highly impractical and dystopian. Um, because if you've ever employed lots and lots of people, uh, you have to put a bureaucracy in place to employ them and monitor them. Um, and then if they don't like their job or don't like their boss or aren't doing a good job and they're dependent upon that job for their very survival and you're guaranteeing them that job, uh, then what do you do? Um, and in real life, while it might make sense to, to in the abstract, in real life you'd have a lot of people uh, doing jobs that they either weren't a good fit for or are not producing real value or, uh, you know, like uh, essentially um, doing make work um, for food to be able to feed themselves. Uh, and that, to me, is the path we must avoid. It might be well-intended, but we might as well just give everyone gray overalls while we're at it. You know what I mean? I mean, like, uh, do we want to work for ourselves or do we want to work for the government? And, and if this is the, the choice we have, if this is the choice we have, it's not about what would serve our government, it's what would serve ourselves. We are the owners and shareholders of the society. It's our wealth. Uh, and we should be able to decide what we want to do with it. You need well-educated, well-trained, well-paid childcare workers. We need many of them. We need more doctors in rural areas and in urban areas. We need more nurses. We have a dental crisis all over this country. We need to train dentists and get them out there. We need more social workers. You want to reform our criminal justice system? Well, you're going to need people to start working with prisoners. You want kids not dropping out of high school? You're going to need mentors working with them. There is an enormous amount of work to be done. Yeah, you know what's fantastic is I really haven't gotten this objection that much uh, around the country. And because Americans know that we like to work. And that the people that, if you gave people a thousand bucks a month, people would probably work as much or more. And the numbers bear that out. There are two groups of people that work less if you give them a thousand bucks a month and those two groups are new mothers who spend more time with their children and teenagers who spend more time in high school and graduate at higher levels and i don't think we're mad at either of those everyone else works as much or more and if you have a thousand bucks a month it would end up circulating in our economy and creating more work in our communities the other big thing is i talk about my wife a fair amount my wife is with our two boys right now one of whom is autistic and what does the market value her work at every day? Zero. What does GDP value her work at? Zero. And so putting $1,000 a month into people's hands doesn't keep us from working. Oftentimes, it ends up recognizing the work that we are already doing that is going completely ignored in our market economy every day. And if the Democratic Party is going to talk about empowering women, I'm going to suggest that there's nothing better we could do than put $1,000 a month into everyone's hands because that would help millions of American women improve their situations from exploitative and abusive jobs and relationships. So the Democratic Party can talk about empowering women or we can do something about it, and I think we should do something about it. And what we believe in is guaranteeing a job in this country to anybody who is prepared to work. I think that's the better approach. Okay. This, this is a sure path to dystopia, and unfortunately, that seems to be the direction we're trending. Um, so I love the spirit of a federal jobs guarantee. If we could all magically have jobs that worked out and that we liked and that helped make the earth more sustainable, like that would be great. 
But in practice, that stuff is going to be very, very difficult and expensive and cumbersome and give rise to a whole new army of bureaucrats who measure our performance. Before deciding to run for president, I decided to try and talk to various political leaders about the fact that this is the core set of issues. And what do you think their responses to me were? Go ahead and shout them out. This will be fun. Sorry, go ahead. Wah, wah. It sounds like you were in the room. One of your fellow candidates, Andrew Yang, has met, made this a centerpiece of his campaign. Some economists estimate that up to 50% of American jobs could be lost by automation. How would a Sanders administration deal with that? There are people who disagree about the extent to which robotics and artificial intelligence uh, will transform the economy. But there is no question that it will have a profound impact. I don't think anyone knows exactly what the impact is. Uh, and let me start off by saying, A, this is an issue that is of enormous consequence for working people, but it is an issue that has gotten nowhere near the kind of discussion that it needs. Now, not only in terms of the potential of job loss, for example, a driverless uh, trucks and cars, will have a profound impact on all kinds of jobs uh, in the trucking industry and taxi cabs, et cetera, et cetera. But the whole impact of robotics in factories, the impact of artificial intelligence in terms of invading our privacy rights. Privacy is becoming a word that we almost don't use anymore because there, I think among the younger generation, there's a fully full understanding that almost everything they do and everything they have done, somebody knows about. And we have not had the kind of legislation or even debate about how we protect privacy from the invasion of um, modern computer technology. But to answer your question, uh, bottom line for me uh, is that technology and robotics and artificial intelligence are not unto themselves bad things if they work to benefit ordinary people. If all that they do is make the rich richer and CEOs even wealthier, if they cost us jobs and drive up corporate profits, that is not acceptable. So the challenge that we face is how do we use technology to improve the lives of working people? So if you have a really a terrible job, uh, a boring job, uh, and we make your job better and we enable you to work 20 hours a week rather than 40 hours a week, is that a bad thing? It is not a bad thing. But it means to say you still need to earn income to live by. We can't cut your salaries in half. Right. Now, one of the areas that we are working with, we take a very, uh, you know, a different approach to Mr. Yang, and that is, uh, I believe, in a uh, jobs guarantee. There are an enormous amount of work uh, there is an enormous amount of work that has to be done all the way from child care uh, to health care to education to rebuilding our infrastructure to combating climate change to dealing with our growing elderly population. Enormous number of jobs out there. And I believe under a Sanders administration what we would do is create those jobs and as people lose their jobs there will be other jobs available. But bottom line is we cannot allow robotics, technology, artificial intelligence to simply throw people out on the street. Technology has got to benefit all of us, not just the heads of large corporations. Why is a federal jobs guarantee better than a universal basic income? I will tell you why. Uh, a simple reason. I think most people want to work. They want to be a productive member of society. I think it's a very deeply ingrained uh, feeling that people have. They don't want to sit on the side. Yes, of course, getting a guaranteed income is better than having nothing and sleeping out on the street. That's for sure. But I think people want to be part of, you know, part of our humanity to be truthful. And how we feel good about ourselves is when we are productive members of our society. We're contributing something. Uh, and I think people feel that very strongly. And I think there is more than enough work to be done in so many areas. And our job is to say, if you are able to work, we have a job for you. Because the truth is, we have so much work to do to rebuild this country in so many ways.